rights, a value central to a constitutional democracy such as ours. Also central to a constitutional democracy is the doctrine of the separation of powers, uh, which others have spoken about. A doctrine which aims to limit excessive government power by dividing it among the various branches of government, the legislative, the executive and the judiciary, with various checks and balances to prevent any one branch from exercising too much power. There have been numerous cases before our constitutional court involving the separation of powers, a doctrine mentioned as early as the first certification judgment. But I think Judge Phineas Mochapillo perhaps said it best when he wrote in 2013, in a constitutional dispensation, the doctrine of separation of powers is not fixed or rigid. He went on to say the courts are duty bound to develop a distinctly South African model of separation of powers, one that fits the particular system of government provided for in the Constitution and that reflects a delicate balancing informed both by South Africa's history and its new dispensation between the need on the one hand to control government by separating powers and enforcing checks and balances and on the other to avoid diffusing power so completely that the government is unable to take timely measures in the public interest. There's been a significant amount of discussion and debate as to what judicial overreach is and isn't. Some will argue that the courts is performing its duty as the custodian of the Constitution, while others will say that it's judicial overreach with the judiciary entering the domain of the executive. Law experts themselves are divided in their opinions as to where to draw the line on judicial overreach. But whichever way one argues it, and whether or not one agrees with the judgments or not, our courts have proved themselves to be independent. A media report published in April this year reads, and I quote, this phenomenon of judicial overreach has become endemic only because the governing apparatus in this country has proved itself to be manifestly incompetent over many years. This compelled the citizens to seek relief from the judiciary. In some cases, the checks and balances framework worked. In the long run, however, it motivated the judiciary to inevitably carve out territorial supremacy at the cost of the executive. And close quotes. Another recent media headline reads, and I quote, judicial overreach should not be made for executive overreach. Now, House Chairperson, one might very well think that these are South African media reports, and I noticed some of the members of the DA seem to quite like the first one. But they're not. The first is from a newspaper in India, and the second one is from the Washington Examiner in the United States. So the point really is this. The debate around judicial overreach is an international phenomenon. It is something we find in developed countries and also in developing countries. It's not a uniquely South African question. It's not the first time the issue of judicial overreach is raised and fiercely debated, nor will it be the last. Nor is it a clear-cut issue either way. As a developing constitutional democracy, it's natural and normal that we all grapple with these issues, particularly, as Judge Montrapello wrote, the doctrine is not fixed or rigid. There are no easy answers, yet there are some points that we need to consider going forward. First, judges must bear in mind that they are invested with great political power. They are permitted to override measures enacted by the legislature and the executive, measures that the legislature and executive regard as constant with the Constitution. Secondly, judicial discretion often competes with legislative discretion and executive discretion. It is thus obvious that tensions will occur.